have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Say, I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. Uh, apocalypse approaches. Uh, it's been a pretty horrific week, and I wonder if we're going to get some more. We're going to talk about all that. Uh, but in the news, we start off with the fact that the Republican Party has put forth its most anti-LGBT platform in history. But don't take my word for it. That's the word of the Log Cabin Republican Club. Exactly. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner, a lifelong Republican, is going to the Republican convention, but not to the convention. She is going to a big tent event outside the convention hall but some, in Cleveland. Some uh, good news from Washington State. They will not have to face an anti-LGBT referendum this year, but they were prepared. <laughs> Very. Thirteen more states have sued to block uh, President Obama's guidance on transgender students from being implemented in their states. There was a setback for gay, lesbian parenting rights in Michigan, we'll explain. I'd call this comic relief if it weren't so tragic, but a bakery in Ohio has refused to sell a birthday cake to a lesbian. Can't be too careful. A male fraternity um, has announced that a, they have a new policy on uh, admitting transgender pledges. And other good news, uh, a little bit anyway, on the slowing of the AIDS epidemic. A character on Star Trek is going to come out provoking uh, not an attack from the Klingons. You're so hip. Well, <laughs> but from an out gay actor who used to play the role. Who could that be? Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Uh, the new Alexander Hamilton on Broadway is openly gay and HIV positive. Among other things. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, we, we start about uh, at, in the midst of this absolutely awful week, and, uh, you know, I wonder if we're going to see more of them. Uh, you know, it's, I try to understand... We're seeing killings every day these right, days. I try to understand why this country is going through this. A lot of it has to do with, with guns. A lot of it has to do with the hate that has been surfaced and let loose by, dare I say it, the Republican Party and the Trump campaign. Absolutely. Um, and fear. And fear. You know, I think a lot of these police shootings are based on their own panic. Right. Uh, as much as their bigotry and stereotypical assumptions. And I think it's it's all part of the backlash that we're going through. I mean, you know, the president likes to go around saying we're not as divided as we think. Well, we, we also have made tremendous... Yes and no. Well, we also have made tremendous advances in the last 40 years, women, uh, African Americans, and LGBT people, and uh, there, there is this segment of society which feels displaced by this, angry all the time, watching Fox News all the time, sometimes this show too. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, that's the way they feel and that's, that's what's coming out right now. Well, and you add into that uh, some, uh, uh, look, it was the Dallas guy who shot the police officers suffering from uh, post-traumatic stress, assembling his arsenal of weapons at home, and, right. and then at the triggered moment, going out and using them. One of the cops shot in Dallas, by the way, not one of those killed, but one of those wounded, was a gay cop. Jesus uh, Ratana, and uh, he was... Uh, his, his, he was married uh, to a guy who was also a cop, had mm -hmm. been a cop, who retired, um, who uh, is the one who got partner benefits for them out there. Exactly. So uh, we all got get caught up on this in one way or another, and it's just, uh, you know, I feel, <laughs> well, there's new, I don't know if you can hear the baby screaming in the background here in the studio. It's an open studio, so there are people all around, but... Uh, there's a sign of younger new life as yes. we talk about people being killed. Yes. Um, in the midst of this, uh, HRC posted a 
an old video of Elie Wiesel, who died a couple of weeks ago, the Holocaust survivor. Uh, and I had forgotten this, and I was there when he did this. He spoke at the Human Rights Campaign Fund dinner, expressing solidarity, everybody's solidarity around these issues. And we thought for 30... In 1989, so this is from 27 years ago, uh, we thought we'd show you a minute of what Elie Wiesel had to say to the Human Rights Campaign dinner in 1989. Those who are do not stop at classes, at races, or again at gays or lesbians. Those who hate you hate me. Those who hate Jews will hate blacks. And those who hate blacks will hate people simply because they talk differently or because they believe in something that they refuse to believe in. Hate is contagious. They are committing sins. Sins against society, sins against humanity, and against creation as such. So why should I not be here to speak to you about self-respect and about civil rights that must apply to every single segment of our population? And the president in, uh, in Dallas spoke about uh, the prejudice that all human beings harbor and have to reflect on and, have to, and, we, and we have to do something about. Uh, but we want to stop the hate and we want to stop the guns that are uh, driving the deaths related to hate. And there's going to be a massive demonstration this Monday in New York on the first night of the Republican convention. At 5 o'clock, we're going to go to the Trump Tower at 56th and 5th Avenue. And, and there's this big, big demonstration organized by Queer Nation, organized by New Yorkers Against Gun Violence, and many other groups have signed on to this. Gays Against Guns, others. We need you there. Stop, stop the hate, stop the guns. Uh, Monday, 5 p.m. at Trump Tower uh, on Fifth Avenue between 56th and 57th Street. Uh, it, we want to be able to express ourselves as the Republican convention starts, and we're about to tell you uh, what we know about the Republican convention so far. But uh, I, for one, don't want to go to Cleveland. I'm perfectly happy not to be there. I think it's going to be chaos and potentially dangerous in the streets. But what I'm hoping is that the entire country will rise up against this hate and bigotry and violence, uh, as Elie Wiesel spoke about uh, 27 years ago, and, uh, and that we will all find ways to express ourselves. So here in New York, we wanted to provide that vehicle and we are looking for a mass demonstration that will show the Republican Party and the world that we are not sitting still for this bigotry and hatred. Even Ruth Bader Ginsburg think this, thought she needs to speak up about the danger uh, that we're facing. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know that that's going to peel away any Trump supporters. But, I do, uh, just as long as you raise that, I would say that uh, uh, we all are a little nervous about a Supreme Court justice uh, speaking like that against a presidential candidate. But Scalia said so many hideous, hateful things about us all along the way, and then went off and went uh, duck hunting with uh, Dick Cheney when he was vice president. Right. So to think that Ruth Bader Ginsburg's statements are uh, come out of nowhere and are uh, uh, unique is ridiculous. And by the way, before we leave all these uh, tragedies uh, and outrages that we've been suffering through in Orlando, we're not forgetting about Orlando. Uh, the mayor there has unveiled plans for a permanent memorial to the those who died there, the 49 who died. Uh, that's going to be built there. And uh, $18 million has been raised for the families of those who died. And that's just one fund. I think there are others. And uh, there are uh, activists in Orlando staged a sit-in this week at the uh, office of Senator Marco Rubio uh, to complain about the fact that he it, has yeah. given lip service to uh, to his concern about those who were killed and yet continues to push anti-LGBT legislation, uh, won't do anything about gun control. You know, it's just uh, proceeding right along his merry way. We talked about this last week, too. The lip service, the, 
the hypocrisy from these Republicans who claim to be caring when well, when these uh, uh, murders of one sort or another happen and then do nothing to and, change anything. And in that demonstration, 10 of them were arrested yesterday, or at least as we tape, uh, they were arrested. They and, had planned to sit in for 49 hours, but they got uh, stopped uh, when the building closed. The cops uh, told them to leave and arrested 10 of them. And also, in terms of uh, really Republican hatred, I mean, uh, they held, on the one-month anniversary of the Orlando massacre, held hearings on the First Amendment Defense Act, the anti-LGBT. This is all online if you, if you really want to go and listen to all the testimony and things. But this is a bill, uh, you know, that would let privately owned businesses refuse to let an employee take time off to care for a same-sex spouse in violation of the F Family and Medical Leave Act. It goes on and on and on. It's all well, about religious freedom. It's very much like the uh, bill passed in Mississippi that was just uh, ruled unconstitutional by a judge in Mississippi. It's, it's almost word for word. What it says is if any individual or company or anyone asserts a religious objection to us or to you know, single mothers having sex or, or uh, being single mothers or any number of other categories, anything they object to on supposedly religious grounds, they're allowed to discriminate, Listen, uh, do anything they want to people. I tried to watch this on C-SPAN last night and I left the TV on and then they got into a late night debate about the environment. They were passing in the House, every, I mean, a whole raft of uh, uh, you know anti-environmental things. Democrats are trying to get up and explain we need clean air, we need clean water, what are you doing? And they just kept passing them by voice votes. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean they're going anywhere if they can be blocked in the Senate uh, with the Democrat minority, uh, but you know. Well, I assume we're about to get to the Republican platform, which includes a plank now that says uh, coal is clean energy. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. in the Republican platform. Well, let's 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 go through the highlights of what's in this Republican platform that was just adopted in committee and has to go to the floor. Pornography is a public health crisis. Marriage should still be between a man and a woman. Children raised in traditional homes are healthier. Did you know that? Uh, parents can force their LGBT children to undergo conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, education includes a good understanding of the Bible which is indispensable for the development of an educated citizenry. Uh, the, <laughs> even the log cabin Republican club, which is trying to support Trump basically, uh, said this is the most anti-LGBT platform in the party's history. And that's saying something, folks. It's because, the most... Because, it, you know, <laughs> Phyllis Schlafly has been writing the social issues in the platform for many, many years. But now it's Tony Perkins. And yeah. Tony Perkins has gotten carte blanche to write the Republican Party platform. Now, there was an effort there, and some uh, gay folks did testify, and, uh, you know, led by... Uh, Vulture capitalist Paul Singer was involved yeah. with this effort to try to tone it down, and they did manage to get some enough signatures for a minority report. And then the the, the regulars in the Republican Party who ate gay said, "Holy moly! And wait a minute!" And they had the guy who offered it, a guy named Matheson, who works with Senator Mike Lee of Utah, take his name off it. And now it's probably not going to get to the floor. Strong arming. So for those of you who think that, look, Andy and I for many years have debated whether there is any point in paying any attention to party platforms. And my position has always been no. They're just there to appease the extreme wings of the party and give them something to crow about. And then the nominee and the people who are elected go blithely on their way and pay no attention to the party platform. But in this case, I would say the fact that the Trump people have made no effort to interfere with any of this and are perfectly content to let this stand, they may think that's because you know they don't want to give it a lot of notice and they're going to go off blithely and do what they want. But they're going to be beholden to these people. Well, it would be very hard to write a platform for Donald Trump since he's taken both sides of every single issue that's ever been in existence. Now, only, that's, only two? That is not a joke. I know. That's exactly what he does. Yeah. You can, we can find tape of him on both sides of every issue. Several sides of every issue. Yeah.
So, uh, but this is what uh, the Republicans in Congress actually do when they yes. get power. Yes, and uh, the people like Tony Perkins who are writing this are the people who do control these people behind the scenes. Uh, one of the uh, demands at the Orlando sit-in at Marco Rubio's office was that he and the rest of the Republican politicians and some Democrats stop taking money from the NRA. This, they are completely influenced by such a small sliver of the uh, you know, population. Every, every part, every conservative party that modernizes gets better on gay issues, and that's what's happened in Western Europe. That's what's happening with this new prime minister in Britain. She's a modernizer, and she says, I'm for total equality of gay people. Teresa Which she May. was not always. No. Uh, well, she has evolved. Right, and they've come around. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying she's good on everything. I wouldn't vote con uh, conservative, but uh, because of their austerity and everything else, the way they treat the poor and immigrants and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's what. But they have gotten better. All these parties and Angela Merkel, all these people have gotten better on LGBT issues, and they're conservatives. But not here. Not here. No, they're going in the other direction. But, so, well, uh, what about this ad that is going to be run by the Equality Federation on transgender people in bathrooms? Now, they're paying. They're paying Fox News <laughs> to run this, and Fox News has agreed. I don't know about giving Fox News my money, but uh, well, but they know where the eyeballs are going to be uh, on the Republican convention. So but you uh, can't change those people's minds. Oh, got to start somewhere. So, Freedom for All Americans and Equality Ohio, and let's see, where have I got this? Um, and uh, the Movement Advancement Project, which is a research group, and National Center for Transgender Equality have all gotten together to do this one minute ad, which they have bought time on Fox. On the final night of the convention, July 21st. <laughs> Somewhere in that. Uh, broadcast period, they will be running this commercial, commercial paid, paid time uh, to get to the audience for the Republican convention. I'm a transgender woman. I was born with a male body, but inside I always knew I was female. So I transitioned and now I live every day as the woman I've always known myself to be. It can be hard to understand what it means to be transgender, especially if you've never met a transgender person. In most states, our laws don't protect transgender people from discrimination in public places or when it comes to using the restroom, something we all need to do every day. I have lived as a woman for many years. Most people, when they stop and think about it, they realize that when businesses can legally force me to use the men's room, it puts me at risk for harassment and violence. Safety and privacy in bathrooms are important for all of us. It's already illegal to enter a restroom to harm someone and anyone who does that can and should be arrested. Updating the law to protect gay and transgender people from discrimination won't change that, but it would help to ensure that people like me aren't mistreated when we need to do something as basic as using the restroom. That is a really nice production. Very a good. Great message and really well done, and I hope they run it multiple times. Uh, but I suppose this is the moment when we have to uh, uh, note that there was someone who claims to be a trans woman arrested in a fitting room at Target in Idaho this week. Yes, uh, a woman in this next stall uh, said that uh, the trans woman was taking pictures of her. Uh, we don't know for sure that she was taking pictures of her or Well, if they, they have booked uh, the person, Sean Patrick Smith, also known as Shauna Patricia Smith, uh, booked on one felony count of voyeurism at a Target store. Now, it's all kind of, it's a little suspicious because Target is the company that announced that, you know, they were... Could uh, be a setup. Yeah, it could be a setup. We don't know. Um, Anyway, we will follow it and try to get uh, current information. Back to the convention. But it's also, you know, it's important to say that uh, 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 things will happen. Yes. And that doesn't mean that people don't deserve their we, rights. We are not all good people. <laughs> but uh, we do want to congratulate the new head of the Transgender Legal Defense and Education Fund, Jillian Weiss. She's uh, a 
who is a, a trans woman and a spectacular lawyer who has won uh, discrimination cases against Saks Fifth Avenue and other companies. Law professor uh, at this, in the Saks case, you know, establishing this principle at the EEOC yeah. uh, of the fact that uh, discrimination against transgender people is uh, uh, sex discrimination. So she is taking over from Michael Silverman, who has been the ED of uh, the Transgender Legal Defense and Education Fund since 2003. Done a wonderful job. He's been here several times. He's a great guy and uh, and uh, is now turning over leadership to a trans uh, woman lawyer. Let's go back to Cleveland. Yeah. Where Caitlyn Jenner oh. <laughs> has booked an appearance there at the convention, but it's going to be in the Big Tent Brunch, which is co-hosted by Log Cabin Republicans, Equality Ohio, College Republicans National Committee, SAGE, and the LGBT Community Center of Greater Cleveland and the Ohio College Republican Federation. So, anyway. All uh, under the umbrella of the American Unity Fund. I yes. believe that is the Paul Singer Hosted group. by Montel Williams. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, th so this is going to be their effort to have something outside the convention, which they have had to do before because they can't get inside much. Well, they, you know, they do have credentials mm -hmm. in the convention, the log cabin people. Do they? Yeah, some of them do. Because uh, yes. they haven't been allowed at places like uh, the conservative uh, political action committee convention. Well, 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 this is the Republican national convention. <laughs> What's the difference? Uh, well, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, come on. Well, there's the, there, there, there seems to be one semi-good re Republican out there. Massachusetts Republican Governor Charlie Baker has signed the bipartisan bill extending protections to the transgender community they had to make some compromises along the way. Well, the compromise, uh, the House and Senate passed two different versions of the bill. And one of them said, uh, yes, gender non-discrimination in public accommodations, as long as you don't, uh, you're not trying to commit fraud or uh, misconduct. And like Shauna. Yes. <laughs> and everybody said, all right, you know, we're not in favor of fraud or misconduct, so fine. You want to put that in the bill? That's okay. We are against waste, fraud, and abuse. <laughs> and some misconduct. All right. Uh, our friends in Washington State have dodged a bullet. Uh, there was a referendum proposed, I-515. Uh, it failed to qualify for the ballot. It was to. It, it would repeal the 10-year-old non-discrimination law protecting transgender folks uh, there and their co-workers and friends. Uh, it failed to get enough signatures. But the but the good story out there is that they really got into gear about gearing about gearing up for this mm -hmm. and raising all kinds of money and organizing and planning and if they had to fight it they were ready to fight it uh, so they're not going to have to fight it on the other hand in Maine yes. uh, there's a group called equal rights not special rights and they are pushing <laughs> for a citizens initiative to remove the phrase sexual orientation from the law there and um, they're going to go out to the polling places, the election uh, places in November, and collect signatures uh, to put this repeal of the Non-Discrimination Act on the ballot next time. Now, this is all they want to do the next time, but when they asked them, would you also like to reinstate the sodomy laws? They said yes. Now, you may they not They would think... like to outlaw homosexuality. Yeah. You may not think that that's a threat. But the, and again, this is a nonpartisan statement. This is just what the man has said. Donald Trump has proposed judges to the court that have said we should allow states to ban sodomy if that's what they want to do. Uh, obviously, to ban same sex marriage, ban sodomy again. It could be reinstated in this country in many states if these judges, enough of these judges, get on the court. And be alarmed, be afraid, be very afraid. Uh, well, uh, watch this show every week and see how relentless these people are. They don't give up. Just because we have legalized same-sex marriage in this country and passed some non-discrimination laws doesn't mean they accept that. They don't accept yeah, it. We lost, on, we lost on sodomy in 1986, and the court upheld the right to ban sodomy, and it took 17 years to get that overturned by the Supreme Court, but it can be turned back. Exactly, and that is, and Trump, because he really doesn't care about any of this stuff. All he cares about is, uh, you know, some what does judge. He, care who, about? he cares about some <laughs> judge mistreating him in a business lawsuit. That's what he cares about. Right. 
uh, and his business is thriving and his brand increasing. So he doesn't he doesn't have any well formed opinions on any of this stuff. He people keep asking him if he'll support the Equality Act, and he no answer, no answer, nothing. I have not knowingly set so, foot on a Trump property for 30 years. And I am appalled to tell you that I know uh, uh, golfers who have gone to his golf courses even after all this started, and I look at them like they have lost their minds, and I say, what is wrong with you? How dare you do that? And they say, oh, well, you know, I wanted to play the course. You wanted to play the course? Well. Collaborators. Well, speaking of which, uh, we've got uh, 13 more states uh, led by Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton there in, uh, to, to try to get an injunction blocking President Obama's guidance to ensure equal treatment of transgender students in public schools. Now, you know, this is just a guidance. I mean, I, can you even bring a legal case about a guidance? No, you can't. And that's why uh, James Essex at the ACLU calls this a political stunt. Uh, the well, nearly half the states are fighting it now. Well, because nearly half the states are run by right-wing Republicans. Who How did that happen? Maybe we didn't voters, vote. Voters. Voters. Elections have consequences. Yeah, funding by right-wing groups. Please, please figure out who the bad guys are and go vote them out of office. So, no? yeah. but uh, the point is that the White House issued a few months ago these suggested guidelines for how to treat transgender students so, in school. It's only a suggestion. Res respect their gender identity, make sure they have uh, appropriate access to bathrooms and uh, locker rooms and everything, uh, call them by the names they prefer, things like that. A suggestion. Then they also said, if you don't do this, then we're, we're, we suggest that you may have violated uh, the rules against uh, non uh, against sex discrimination, and that's all they said. They didn't institute any suits. They didn't come down hard on anyone. They just said, "Here's the situation." And now, 23 states have filed lawsuits uh, against the implementation of this law, but none of them have been sued. None of them have been threatened. Nothing has happened to them, and so they're not going to be well, able to bring this, crazy. these lawsuits. Well, it's like, what, it's like what happened at the United Nations when they finally put somebody in charge of LGBT stuff just to look at, look at discrimination and violence against LGBT people. And, you know, Michael Petrellis put a video together of what these countries who fought this unsuccessfully, thank goodness, uh, said about all this and how this is culturally insensitive, that we, we're not allowed to beat up gay people. Yes, that is what they believe. Well, of course. That is what they believe. And to execute gay people in some cases. Well, uh, that uh, you could probably put that video in the Republican platform and it would fit very well, nicely. Well, I'm going to put it into our email this week uh, so that uh, if any of you want to see uh, this 10-minute video that Michael put together, you All can. All right. And as long as we're on this uh, uh, downward spiral, let's uh, mention that they, the right wing, in its unrelenting attempt to discredit us, uh, criminalize us, and whatever, has come out with another uh, uh, phony study I put that in quotation marks, about uh, parenting, same-sex parents versus opposite-sex parents. And this is supposed to prove that kids do better with uh, opposite-sex parents. Well, there were exactly 20 adults, uh, same-sex parents, in this study. It was uh, published by a pay-to-publish uh, journal. It was not peer-reviewed. Uh, it, pay to play. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's it's just phony, phony, phony. It was done by a Catholic University professor who is a well-known homophobe. Yeah, but there it is in black and white. You can read it. Well, exactly, black and white. So uh, if you hear about a new study, don't believe What's it. What's going to happen in North Carolina? Um, they are now talking about maybe doing a special session to deal with the controversial law that they've got. As well, they're afraid the of losing the NBA All-Star game, so it's come down to this. If they well, the NBA was supposed to announce this week what they were going to do about yeah. moving the All-Star game out of Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, so if if the legislators say, well, you know, we'll have a we'll have a special session uh, in uh, January, <laughs> you know. I mean, that shouldn't That's be. That's not going to work. That and work I, but I think the Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, has been very forthright and, and solid on this. We'll see. We'll see. But so far, he's been very strong. And I would expect, I could be proved wrong by the time you see this show, 
that they will stand up for us and that they, if the legislature does not actually repeal the law, that they will move the game. And in Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina, the EEOC is having to sue Bo Jangles there for sex harassment and retaliation against a transgender employee. Bo Jangles, a restaurant, not the actor. No. <laughs> Bill Bo Jangles Robinson. Yes. All right. And in Mississippi, you mentioned the, the fact that uh, the, the law there, the anti-LGBT law there has been declared unconstitutional, but Governor Phil Bryant is still trying to force implementation he went of back it. To, he went back to the judge who declared it unconstitutional and asked for a stay on, on that ruling so that they could go ahead and put the law into effect while they appealed his ruling crickets from him. He didn't even reply. So they went to the uh, Fourth Circuit Appeals Court and they, uh, uh, so, I'm sorry, I'm not sure it's the Fourth Circuit. Uh, um, no, it's the Fifth. Okay. Uh, so they're trying to go around the judge and they've now brought in, since the Attorney General of Mississippi will not appeal the ruling, uh, the governor is now enlisting his chief counsel the Alliance Defending Freedom, where we heard that before, and some other right-wing law group. Uh, God knows how much he's spending on trying to they don't overturn have very much this money ruling. There. Exactly. But the good news is in uh, Virginia, we've been looking at this case of Gavin Grimm, the young trans man, uh, high school student. Trans who, boy, who could say. Trying to get access to the bathroom there. Had it. They took it away. He sued. He won. Uh, the state appealed, and now the Fourth Circuit uh, Court has denied uh, Virginia's attempt to get a stay on that ruling, and Gavin Grimm and kids in, I think, four or five other states should now have access to uh, the bathroom. They can appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. They have until August 27th to do that, but uh, I would doubt that the Supreme Court would grant cert. Uh, Logan, Utah is trying to organize its first Pride Festival in October. What? And in mid-August in Rehoboth, uh, uh, Delaware, I believe, there is going to be uh, the, an, a meeting of independent Arab LGBTQ people to organize on their behalf. What about Cody, Wyoming? Cody, Wyoming, where they have the wonderful Buffalo Bill Museum, one of my favorite places. They have beautiful, particularly Native American and they uh, have, materials And they there. have the annual Cody Stampede Parade, and we have a picture from it. In conjunction with the rodeo. And yes, the, uh, the parade has various floats. So some jokers put together this float, which is an outhouse that they have labeled transgender bathroom, restroom, excuse me. Well, they said it was, it was a joke. It was not intended to be offensive, but to point out that we all have used a bathroom since we were potty trained, outhouses themselves are transgender. Well, that's not necessarily going to fly. It's a little uh, tortured as an explanation. So the parade committee has apologized for that and says they will talk to the Wyoming Equality Group and trans groups in Wyoming. Better news from uh, two big national education organizations, the National Parent Teacher Association and the National Education Association representing together more than five million members and constituents, uh, they established formal policies of LGBTQ inclusion and they're going to redouble their efforts to get federal, state, and local uh, uh, stu students uh, treated with dignity, all these students, uh, safe and free from discrimination. This is very important. It is important. Uh, less important is the story out of Toledo, Ohio, where a bakery denied a birthday cake, not a wedding cake, a birthday cake to a lesbian. She wanted to order it for her wife, but when the bakery found out that the woman who came in to order the cake was married to a woman well, and wanted it as a birthday cake for that woman. They saw it on her Facebook page that she was a lesbian in a, relation, in a sinful relationship. So you can't sell birthday cakes to them. Well, that's one for our side. That's going to help our cause. I certainly hope so, but it, it uh, explicates the uh, depths to which we have sunk that uh, some bakery is, has gotten the message 
well, that not just, you know, the right wing tries to make these distinctions. We don't hate gay people. We're not trying to take any rights away from gay people. But marriage is uh, a sacred uh, man-woman thing, and we're allowed yeah, to believe Trump that. Donald Trump has done it three times. <laughs> and Newt Gingrich, too, yeah. including telling one wife on her cancer Sign hospital this. bed, I'm dumping you for the next one. Uh, <laughs> sacred. <laughs> So they try to make this fine distinction that we're only against any support of marriage between same-sex uh, people. But then, but the message that filters through to this bakery is, oh, we're not supposed to serve gay people at all. We're supposed to just exclude them from public life. Well, lots of places do have the right to exclude us from public life because there are no federal protections, which is why we need the Equality Act, the Federal Equality Act. We can't get that unless we get a... Uh, a, a progressive, uh, fair Congress, which we do not have at this point. But they are trying to be fair to us in, in D.C. You know, this was a, in the District of Columbia. Uh, they fended off a challenge, a repeal challenge by referendum of their uh, LGBT rights laws and uh, marriage uh, laws. Very but, big struggle. But Well, because they actually have something in their charter uh, that says you can't bring things about... Um, against human rights, uh, human rights. Yeah. and now they're trying to add it to their constitution uh, well, i don't know if the difference between the charter and the constitution but they're doing that and in iowa the civil rights commission uh fixed the bad brochure they had put out that had been challenged legally they had said well our human rights law means that uh, uh non-discrimination rules apply to churches in certain ways when they're doing non-religious functions including something about weddings and the right wing blew up and sued them and said you know this is uh, horrible and and uh, violation of our free speech and the and our side said you know that probably wasn't a good idea and so the Iowa Civil Rights Commission withdrew the brochure rewrote it it's not enough for the right wing no give them an inch they'll take a mile so they are continuing their lawsuit and saying that no law should control church speech of any kind. So they want the entire human rights law in Iowa uh, ruled unconstitutional as a violation of their right. First Amendment rights. We've got a couple of rulings involving parents. All right. In Maryland, the high court adapt, adopted the uh, a de facto parent standing for lesbian co-parents. This was uh, the case of a same-sex spouse, spouse of a birth mother who gave birth to the child shortly before they were married. Uh, and she does have standing as a de facto parent to pursue custody and visitation in the context of their divorce proceeding, but although she never adopted the child. But in Michigan, mm. a court has ruled that uh, a lesbian couple divorcing, uh, I'm sorry, separating. Uh, they, were never they were never married. Never married. And therefore, the non-biological mother of their eight-year-old boy born during their relationship, uh, who she has co-parented for eight years, uh, has no rights to seek any kind of parental rights because they were not married. Well, and they, the court in this case said they never showed any inclination to get married, even when it did become uh, possible. I, uh, you know, uh, uh, no, this, no, no. this to me is the hierarchical heterosexual oh, hypocrisy. Please. That, uh, you know, two people have a child, raise the child together for eight years, and yet because they never went down to the courthouse or the church to get married, uh, one of them has no rights to parent the child is insanity to right, me. Right. Insanity. Right. Uh, the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services is actively recruiting LGBTQ and allied parents to foster the state's LGBTQ homeless youth. And the Williams Institute, our research uh, uh, giants uh, housed at the UCLA uh, Law School, have put together a new website called LGBT Stat, uh, in where they've got all the demographics as we know them of our population self-reported. It's I think it's still an undercount uh, as we go along, but they break it down by states, where we are, who we are, how many children we have, whether we're married or not. And so, if you're looking for that kind of demographic 
uh, information, go to the Williams Institute and look for LGBT, STAT, LGBT STAT. Progress in at Princeton at the Chi Pi fraternity. It's one of the nation's oldest. Uh, they have voted on a new membership policy that will allow transgender male students to pledge effective immediately. And the, all you got to do is present a legal documentation defining the pledge as a male. And to bring us around full circle to the anti-gun demonstration we're doing Monday, 5 p.m., Trump Tower here in New York, we'll Fifth be there. Avenue. Come meet us. 56th and Come 5th. Come say hello. 5 p.m. Monday. Uh, on the other hand, the Pink Pistols oh. are now reporting that uh, a month ago, before the Orlando massacre at the Pulse nightclub, they had 1,500 members. Now they say they have 8,000 because people are signing up. But oh. I can also report that gays against guns, uh, it, chapters are springing up all over the country, and that is taking off as a movement. Well, uh, interesting decision out of Massachusetts. This is via our legal eagle, um, uh, Art Leonard. A man was convicted on charges of statutory rape and decent assault and battery on a boy. Uh, had some of that reversed because some of the evidence given at the trial was that he had gay male porn. And they said that you can't, uh, th there is a myth that homosexual men have an interest in sex with underage children. It's been discredited, uh, and that's what the judge said. So this evidence that was introduced, that he was interested in gay, adult gay male porn, was inadmissible. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a small thing. The guy, you know, is still convicted on some other things, but there was that. Sad news, uh, we, we learned that Chelsea Manning uh, tried to uh, end her life. Uh, and is now in hospital uh, and, and, well, it's in, uh, imprisoned at Le Fort Leavenworth for practically forever, but uh, that's sad news. And sad news from San Francisco where the stud bar, uh, which was facing, uh, it's been there since 1966, is facing a 300% rent increase and will be folding up, probably folding up shop there in Folsom Street. Okay. International news? Yes. All right. Well, let's. Uh, Britain seems to be at the top of the news with their new conservative prime minister, a change of leadership for the conservative party. So now Theresa May, uh, who was the home secretary in charge of things like immigration and uh, home, homeland security. Not good on immigration, but good, I mean, is one of the people who marshaled through the same-sex marriage bill. Yes, uh, was originally uh, very reluctant to do that, was anti-same-sex marriage, uh, barely supported civil unions, but then uh, really was a leader of the push for legalizing same-sex marriage and ended up apologizing for having been opposed to adoption by same-sex couples. Uh, changed her mind on that, too. She, she says her government will be unequivocally committed to supporting LGBT people and fighting hate crime, homophobia, and transphobia. But we in have... In the UK and around the world. But we've talked here for the last few years about the difficulty that uh, LGBT asylum seekers have in Britain and, and how they spend years trying to fight for their rights. She's, she's, she was very uh, anti-immigrant uh, yeah. because that was what the Conservative Party felt they had to do to win elections. Well, you won the election and you messed everything up. Well, and, and that anti-immigrant feeling is a large part of what uh, uh, made people vote for the exit, the right. Brexit. But they have, a British lawmaker has introduced a, a law to repeal a, a, a law that uh, could be read as allowing ship owners to fire sail sailors who engage in gay sex while on board. <laughs> it's an old what, law. Well, there it is. Uh, well, the United Reformed Church in England has okayed same-sex marriages in their churches if the local churches want to do them. And the Anglican Church in Canada has passed, after a recount, <laughs> same-sex marriage. Uh, they, had <laughs> for, they had to get two-thirds agreement by the lay people, the clergy, and the bishops, yep. and, they, get, and they, fell, they thought they fell one vote short among one, the clergy. One vote. And people were crying and weeping oh. and, and so upset. And then someone said, hey, I think there's a little irregularity here. And they did a recount, and they said, oh, 
It passed after all. Now, don't run to the altar too quick. It's got to be uh, affirmed with the next synod in 2019. But several bishops said, oh, we're gonna, just going to do it anyway. <laughs> and they said that before the recount. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, on the other hand, MCC minister Jim Mulcahy uh, went to Russia and has been expelled and fined $30. They say he violated his visa by engaging in religious activities, whatever that means. Uh, yeah, for a minister. In Thailand, LGBT prisoners are gonna get their own facility there uh, uh, to, to, if you're a lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and for their are, own safety. They count about 4,500 LGBT prisoners divided pretty equally between men and women. Uh, out of 300,000 people in prison uh, total in Thailand. In Albania, uh, the conservatives and clerics there are demanding a withdrawal of a proposal to outlaw discrimination on the basis of sexual identity, saying it could open the way to gay marriage. And the thing is, they're doing this. It's a part of a package of judicial reforms to please the EU uh, on, July, you know, on July 21st but uh, there's a big now move to fight it there. There is a big fight raging in Bermuda over same-sex marriage. Uh, first, there was a court decision that said the human rights law there mandated that uh, same-sex couples have legal recognition. Then the right wing got upset about that and said, all right, uh, uh, you know, we got to overturn this. And the prime minister said, we're going to have a referendum. We're going to ask the people whether, how they feel about civil unions, how they feel about same-sex marriage. Not a binding resolution, just, a, uh, just we'll take their temperature. They don't want it. Well, they voted heavily against it, but not enough people showed up f to vote to even make the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, uh, recommend, uh, the non-binding resolution have any weight. And now the parliament wants to pass a constitutional amendment to say, even though the human rights law says we can't discriminate, and the court has said that, we're going to pass a constitutional amendment to overrule that and and say that marriage is only between a man and a woman, uh, not, uh, you know, irrespective of what the human rights law says. So now... Two some, guys are going to court <laughs> and saying, they, you're going to do this. They applied for a marriage license. They said the human rights law does give us this right, and we have a lawyer who says... Uh, uh, the, the Marriage Act of 1944 allows it, and if you don't give us a marriage license, we're going to sue. Well, they were denied a marriage license, so now they are going to court, uh, and they're going to go back to the court that originally said the human rights law says uh, you can't discriminate. Hey, Mike Bloomberg, you play a lot of golf in Bermuda. Uh, you, <laughs> he you, has a house there. You held up same-sex marriage in New York for five years <laughs> when you fought it here, and then you came out for it, so why don't you get behind it in Bermuda? Along with Michael Douglas, who's also big in oh, Bermuda. Yeah? yeah. Oh, he's been there for years. Yeah. Uh, All right. What's going on in Australia? They, they, they had their election, <laughs> and then we didn't know what the result was. Well, now it looks like the conservatives have like a one-vote majority. One-vote majority. Maybe two. Which means Malcolm one. Turnbull can continue to be the prime minister if they keep him on. Uh, and he's the one who wants a plebiscite uh, on same-sex marriage, a non-binding plebiscite that would cost $160 million. They're so crazy about these non-binding plebiscites. But the, there's, the, the, there's such a narrow margin there that there might be enough people to vote against a plebiscite, in which case they'd really delay same-sex marriage. Because he'll never agree to a free vote on same-sex marriage in the parliament without the plebiscite. And even if you got the plebiscite, uh, there are a lot of people who are going to vote against it anyway. It's a mess in Australia. It's a mess in Bermuda. It's a mess in Australia. Right. Keeping track? Yeah. In Mexico, <laughs> they're going to have a first national gathering of LGBTI activists in Cuernavaca in August, August 25th to 28th. They're going to have a big convention. Uh, the first one ever nationally in Mexico. I hope it's not as divisive as creating change. <laughs> no, <laughs> creating change is a great thing. It had a little trouble this year, uh, but uh, be careful. Uh, yeah, well, we don't have time to go into any of that. Uh, Uruguay, as opposed to Britain, has granted asylum to a gay man from Russia mm. who says that he is being abused in Russia and wants And out. now they're going to Uruguay. A Latin America's... Getting ahead of the United States these days. Right. 
All right, moving on to AIDS and medical news. Actually, the big medical news, uh, well, uh, there are several. Yes. Uh, uh, let's actually start with the, uh, the study that found that uh, uh, they looked at... Partners. Yes. Who had sex 58,000 times not using condoms where one was uh, positive and one was not. 1,200 there, couples. There were zero transmissions between those couples because the, if the person who's positive is taking the drugs and is undetectable, the chances of uh, 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 transmitting, well, turn out to be zero. The only, there were, there, were a few, uh, there were 11 people who became HIV positive, but these were all attributed to outside partners. Fooling around outside the relationship. Well, out of 1,200 couples, what do you expect? Yes. Uh, but I expect it's, a lot more than that. It's, it's <laughs> a stunning study. Yes. And stunning. Uh, and because ending the ending the epidemic is all about getting the people who have the virus on the drugs so that they're undetectable and they're not going to transmit it to anybody else. That's the whole strategy. Well, here. stopping transmission by whatever means, whether being on the drugs to make them uh, undetectable and non-transmissible or using protection or whatever, uh, by whatever means, you just want to stop transmission of the virus or, right. or reduce it so that uh, you're down to nothing or almost no, nothing. Back to Australia, they yeah. do say they get a thousand new HIV infections a year, but AIDS cases of people who progress to AIDS, and they've got a pretty good national health system there, AIDS cases are so low that they're not even counted anymore. They're calling it not a public health issue anymore in Australia. AIDS. Now, again, people are still getting HIV. You yep. don't want to get HIV because, you know, you have to take drugs for the rest of your life, at least at this point. Right. Uh, but that's, that's progress. Now, the reason we heard the story of the no transmission among 58,000 cases of uh, intercourse without condom is uh, that this kind of news is now being released in anticipation of the International AIDS Society Conference next week in Durban, South Africa. So you may be hearing some other AIDS-related news, and it's all basically coming out of Durban. Meanwhile, in this benighted country, the House subcommittee uh, uh, voted to cut funding to protect the health of LGBTQ Americans, flat funding for Ryan White, HIV prevention programs, and, uh, you know, cutting other resources. Uh, Except abstinence-only education. That's what I was going to say. Even in the eighth year of the Obama administration, we are still doing this well, nonsense. Well, the president proposed cutting it, and they put it back. Well, the U.S. did reverse its plan to cut funding, PEPFAR funding, uh, President's Fund funding to South Africa. The original idea was, well, they're very middle class now. They don't need uh, our help. Well, not so much. So they've restored uh, that funding. The CDC is uh, Centers for Disease Control is looking at these meningitis cases in L.A. It turns out that a lot of them are among Latino, gay, and bisexual men and other Latinos. Uh, so far, 22 cases, one dead. There's a vaccine people can get. Yes, there is. And get it. Uh, and big news out of Mount Sinai Hospital here in New York City, which is now has a Center for Transgender Medicine and surgery. Yeah, now, we're, there we're has, a website for them. There are very few places, it turns out, in this country where you can actually get uh, transgender surgery, gender confirming surgery. So, Mount Sinai committed to starting this program. Their surgeons have performed 70 gender confirmation surgeries so far this year. They have a wait list of about 130 people at this point. You can read more about it at mountsinai.org backslash CTMS for the Center for Transgender Medicine and Surgery. Yeah, uh, and they and these numbers are coming in without any publicizing of it before now. We have been waiting for uh, permission to publicize this. They wanted to wait until they had it up and running and, and could deal with some of the backlog. Uh, but this is going to be a great, great help to people in this area. Uh, Pauline Park, uh, uh, transgender who, activist, uh, ha who's been on this show several times, is has given us a statement saying how valuable this will be to the local population uh, because it is very hard to find places to get this surgery. Okay, uh, running out of 
Shall okay. we move and, on, Ted? Uh, and I just want to mention that the Bronx Museum of the Arts is opening a big exhibition called Art Aids America. A uh, hundred artists, 120 works, very important new survey of uh, art connected to AIDS at the Bronx Museum of the Arts. Now, the big story in entertainment news of the week is that Pokemon Go has become very popular at gay bars, <laughs> but we don't understand it, and uh, people are killing we themselves. We understand it, but we their, don't know why anyone phones. would do it. Please, please don't walk around the streets <laughs> with your head Come to the demonstration instead. I almost got killed by a guy on a bike going the wrong way right at me with his head in his phone. I, I yelled at him. He told me to F off. And That's uh, nice. Isn't that nice? It's charming. Uh, the other big news is Star Trek. Star Trek Beyond is opening uh, July 21st with John Cho as Sulu, the part formerly played by George Takei. Uh, but George Takei is upset because they're now making Sulu Gay. And George says In that, honor of George. Yes, and George says he, he talked to them, he tried to talk them out of it because you, this is not the category that Gene Roddenberry uh, uh, created. But uh, character, our friend Chris Cooper, character, who, yeah. uh, who, is, who does a comic book. Wrote, wrote the Star Trek yes. Starfleet Academy comic book, says they've changed a lot of things in the TV show and the movie uh, movies uh, from the original Gene Roddenberry, and why not this too? And Gene Roddenberry was pro-gay and just didn't do it then because he thought it was, you know, too early in time. And the Enterprise is supposed to go where no one has gone before. <laughs> so... Get over yourself, George. Yes. It's okay. And guess what? The new Hamilton is gay, too. Javier Munoz is gay, and he's being kissed there by Lin-Manuel uh, Miranda. Miranda, and he is taking over from Lin-Manuel. In the and, lead of Hamilton. Uh, he's been doing one show a week as, uh, as the alternate. The guy is also a, a cancer survivor. And HIV positive, wow. openly. And he is the new uh, Hamilton, so, uh, and supposedly very, very, very good. I'm alive and for all intents and purposes healthy and well, and I'm grateful for that, Javier says. Last reminder, it's this weekend, the Outtakes Film Festival at Cherry Grove, this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Charming uh, Outtakes from Boys in the Sand. Do you remember that movie? That was, uh, that was seminal. Wow. Yeah. And there's a new gay dating show coming to Logo called Finding Prince Charming, hosted by Lance Bass. Oh, boy. Uh, Thirteen suitors living together, eliminating. It's a typical, it's, a, it's an old story. All right. But the one thing we really want you to pay yes. attention to is Monday's demonstration at Trump Tower at 5 p.m. here in New York. Stop the hate, stop the guns. That's uh, Fifth Avenue and 57th Street, 5 o'clock on Monday. Yes. First and night of the Republican convention. Yeah, and I've gotten messages, as I've put this up on Facebook and elsewhere, I've gotten messages from people saying, oh, I'm sorry, I can't be there, you know, you know I live in wherever, I'm with you in spirit. Do something where you are. Yes, yes, come on, it doesn't take much to uh, find a target, a Republican target in your town, maybe your local politicians. And we're nonpartisan, but the party has taken a, a strong stand against us, and it has to be, st well, any kind of an organization that defames us the way they do, we're, has to be stood up to. We're against bad things Democrats do, too. Oh, yes. Yes, we are, and we let Read them know. Read my Facebook feed. <laughs> yeah. But this is an opportunity at the beginning of the Republican convention to be heard, to express yourself. And uh, we think it's important, and therefore we will be there Monday, 5 p.m., Trump Tower, 5th Avenue, between 56th and 57th Street. Stop the hate, stop the guns. It is a horrifying time we are living with, and you do feel a little better when you get out and fight it. And bring your friends and tell people, because the bigger we are, the bigger impact we will and, make. And we have added to our thank yous this week our friend Tom O'Neill from Gold Derby. Thank you very much. And we will see you next week.